Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's a J Gemini. Tonight I got a really interesting sort of quick overview. This is just my first initial impressions and disassembly of a knife that I've been really stoked and sort of fell in love with as soon as I saw. Uh, interesting story about this knife though. Um, this is the American Blade Works Model 1 version 5 is what I think it's called. But the interesting story is, is that I bought this knife um, after being selected, got an email that I was selected in the lottery uh, to be able to purchase this. Essentially, you know, your name gets called up kind of like with high-end sneakers, right? And then you have the ability to purchase it. So I bought it. It was supposed to come in the mail last Friday. It says it was out for delivery, never came. I called, they said, oh, it's a carrier's already coming. I'm like, my carrier already came. I've never heard of a second carrier, courier, sorry, um, coming and dropping off other mail after the first one comes. So it didn't come that day. Called Saturday, got a sort of New York, uh, rude guy that was kind of like, well, we'll see what happens if it happens, you know? And then, you know, now we're here all the way next Saturday. So I'm stoked to have the knife in front of me. Uh, run by a great guy, Michael, who actually ran it, said, hey, you know what, I'll send you one since it's not going to show up. And he actually printed a shipping label. I'm like, hold the phone. Look at what came. He's like, ah, I just had it packaged up and everything. So uh, definitely a great guy. But with all that aside, let's jump right into the knife itself. And first I'm going to do a size comparison to knives that just about everybody is going to either have in their hand at once or does own. Not the Yojimbo. I almost grabbed that, but we could show that too, can't we? So this is your pair of three lined up at the custom sharpening drill. Done by me very amateurly, but it actually came out okay. And your um, bit mini bug out. And then these are them tail to tail. So as you can see, this is what I would call a perfect size knife. This is about three inches. This is about three inches. Um, and so this is definitely probably about 2.3, 2.25. I would say this is right about the size of a, a full size bug out in the way that it actually, um, you know, it's length. As far as the thickness, it's not very thick at all and it's pretty thin behind the edge. So we can include the new Yojimbo. This knife is extremely thin behind the edge. You can see at my uh, very, uh, at the very edge, sorry, you can see my um, fingers are almost touching. And this, although it's a full flat grind all the way up, very much the same. It comes down to an extremely, extremely thin zone right on that edge. Also, in the hand, feels really, really light. And, you know, this is a flipper frame lock. Now my first initial impressions on this knife is American high-end bug out, right? Bug out on serial, or uh, not bug out, sorry, uh, elementum. So elementum uh, high-end on steroids. We have a high-end sort of acid washed, no stone wash on here, finish that I really like, or working finish. S35VN is the steel, but it's all made in America by a small shop, American Blade Works, nice. Choil and this sort of, you know, custom cut or whatever you want to call it, uh, micarta handle. So that's amazing, micarta within itself. And cool thing is, is that it's not just a sort of standard boring one color micarta. It's kind of what every single one it looks a little bit unique because the way that the micarta is cut, it's striped different, things like that. Um, titanium backspacer, titanium clip, some things that I did see uh, already with the knives that are sort of gripes is the pocket clip seems very loose. So we're gonna see if we can fix that when we open it up. Like I said, it's very light. So we're gonna see if there's any milling. I don't see any down in there. And um, the only other thing, again, this is sort of my OCD, but one side of this is actually sort of hand rubbed higher than the other. And same on the back. So one scale is like a little bit lower than the other. Again, this is sort of a handmade knife. To me, when I saw this, I'm like, this is gonna be the next TRM. 
this is going to be the flipper version of the TRA Madam. And get it into my hand, I still very much think this. It feels amazing in hand. Very, just fits in there. Rounded, contoured uh, edges. You can choke up, even though there isn't a choil. Your finger's not going anywhere because of this nub, uh, flipper nub, and it just holds in there really, really good. Even better than the sort of area that's kind of like a choil on the Elementum. This is much more rounded, feels like a choil and uh, very, very high end. We're also messing with an internal stop pin, it looks like. So let's get in to the knife itself. Looks like we're using a T10, hmm, but kind of loose. So maybe if there was a T12, and definitely a T8 on the body screws. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna tack it all from this side. There is actually a shape cut into the micarta that stops it from rotating. So let's start with the pivot first. Also came with no blade play out of the box, again, showing you the action. It's sort of a shake-free, quick action. You know, very much like I said, you would imagine an Elementum to be, which is not in any way a degradation. It is a compliment. It is one of my favorite flipper actions. And, you know, I've had $300 you know, Chavez, made by Riot, or Riati, however you like to say it, um, and a lot of other knives come through my hands that have, you know, good actions as well, so. And uh, what I was getting with it uh, as the Elementum is one of my favorites. It's just very snappy, very easy to use, very fun. And what I'm gonna do, I always do this with it. I just open it so it doesn't have that tension in the system to push the springs apart. So, just got that loose here. Then I'm going to take and loosen these up as well. Also like the hidden hardware aspect on the um, pocket clip, that's cool. But it does look like this is going to be a single pocket clip, or a single screw on the pocket clip endeavor. So. Love the finish that it's all the way through the knife. Seems very high end. Probably would show wear pretty easily, but probably is gonna look good showing wear over time. So that's definitely cool. That's fully out, that's fully out. And this blade shape is also very reminiscent of something like a, um, you know, kind of a mix of your sort of classic, I, I, I don't even know what you would call it. Um, this, I like the sort of flat and then it sort of rounds up to a tip and the tip itself instead of just being like a point is sort of like a wedge in the blade kind of like you would with like a tanto with the point here um, instead of being something that's a little bit more smooth like this where the edge isn't like this but instead it's on the bottom and then it comes to that point. Um, perfect knife that is very much like this type of edge as well, very useful. You can use it a little bit more towards scraping, and that also bends for a little bit bigger of a belly. Um, is a knife like your Ontario Rat, which is a great knife as well for the money. Speaking of the Rat, hopefully I don't tell you guys this and I don't get the chance to get one, but I saw where they were making um, at the EDC Knife Workshop, uh, Way of the Blade is what I think it's called. All right, what's going on here? Huh. It seems as if something is holding on to the back of this, although the front is coming up quite happily. I don't know if there's just I don't know what is happening here, but I'm going to, I wonder if it has something to do with the pocket clip. What I'm going to try to do is open, take the screws off at this side as well. I'd rather do it like a sandwich, but of course I want to make sure that everything 
gets taken apart the right way. But anyways, what I was saying is sort of wave of knife, I think is what it's called. Way of Knife slash EDC Workhouse or Blade House. They do great work, but they're actually making a reblade that is an M390, and it's some uh, for the Ontario Rat. I think it's the number two. Okay, so when we pull this out and I release this tension, this should just come off and also pull out the pivot. So like I said, kind of a weird way to do this. but it seems like it's the way it wants to be done. So we're going, yeah, this is definitely strange. Okay, there we go. As you can see, it's really nice nested liners in there. Oh, that's interesting. So it looks like that there are screws to hold on the scales, and then there's actually screws underneath that hold onto the backspacer. The backspacer also looks to maybe be a little bit hollowed out to keep things light. And then what's kind of strange is you have this sort of floating stop pin in between. So the way everything is together isn't the, e the easiest in that way. So I wonder, huh. Yeah, the way this is constructed is sort of strange. I don't know if you see what's going on here, but basically you have bearings that go inside you like construct the knife like this. The scale over here is being held on by the clip. So to get this scale off, it looks like you essentially have to take this side off, but that also means you remove the screw and you also end up going ahead and removing the pivot. Um, it's yeah, right here. And then you're sort of left with this where it's constantly under uh, spring pressure, which is certainly strange. And yeah, this is a uh, interesting knife for sure, the way it's designed. So let's just kind of keep going forward. It looks like once we get into here, it's using T6 hardware. No. Hmm. No, those are Allen, tiny Allens. Huh, that's neat. So, yeah, not, not a big fan of that, to be honest. So, essentially, the pocket clip, like we mentioned, is loose. To try and get it tightened, or maintenance the knife, you basically have to take the scales off. You have to sort of have everything free floating in here, like a sandwich, push everything through. And then this is very much like trying to juggle like a bench made bug out, for example. Um, give me a moment, I'm gonna cut, see if I have these Allen screws, uh, Allen wrench, and I'll be right back. Okay guys, we are back. And we have the right bit. Looks like these are not loctited in. They're very lightly in there. And they are, it's a 1.3 hex. So I'm never one that's super duper uh, picky about different hardware sizes. It's fine. Um, but... This is something that takes it definitely to a different level. Um, I mean, realistically, that, that, that seems a bit much, to be honest, um, especially having to juggle the internal stop pin and there being bearings and just, yeah. So, but interesting, it looks like, yeah, huh. Is that, is that, no? No, I guess it's not. So this is just, I guess, a heat-treated heat treated piece of steel. I thought for a second, though, those were bronze um, washers pressed into the blade that the bearings uh, ran on, but it doesn't seem that way. So the inside of the knife is 
not simple, but it is, right? It is an internal stop pin, which we have seen before. Um, and it is the, uh, like we see right here, it is this lightened backspacer that's sandblasted really nice. Here is the piece that I was wanting to see if we could tighten, which is the um, pocket clip because it's so loose. And I guess, while I'm at it, I'll put these back in, which also screws right into titanium for so, for some. You know, that might be a no-no. It might be something you don't like at all because of the fear of stripping. Again, maybe just don't over-tighten anything. It's gonna be fine. Now, interestingly enough, again, I mean, I just have to call like what I'm seeing here. It This is a hex. Um, Allen key is what I mean, instead of it going ahead and being uh, just a Torx. So I'm not really understanding what's the thought behind this. Why couldn't it just be Torx? You're using Torx. Um, I just, I don't understand. So, yeah, I'm just going to keep going and going. Oh, it seems like it's not loose at all. I'm going to see if I can get on get on it with a little bit of torque. I don't have a proper... Yeah, that's not going to work. Fortunately, I don't seem to have a proper... I need to get um, better, you know, so I can actually get some torque on it. Something like the a Weehaw set that has this smaller size. Yeah, but it moves back and forth. So that's just that's just not good. It, it seems like even if you tighten this up, it's going to move back and forth, which to me, I just don't understand why it has to be. Uh, I, I wish there was better tolerances or there was two screws to basically line that up, right? And then also it's really kind of ugly that uh, I don't really have a gripe about anything, anything but being rubbish in my normal reviews, but... That's just not cool, the whole situation with um, the way everything's kind of put together and you have to use these different screws and then it's kind of compressing the blade out and then the uh, stop pin being on the other side. But then like you can't use this side and start with the pivot. You have to like push the pivot in and line everything up and it's that's just a lot because the stop the uh, pivot is on this side right you have to push it through but then you can't get in on this side because of the pocket clip so you basically are gonna have to do what I'm about to show you so and the bearings aren't like super aligned in there until you put the pivot in so it's it's just another yet another thing that has to be kind of like juggled so that is not the best design. Jeez Louise, yeah. Okay. I'm gonna take this. Some people ask what way I put these bearings. I usually put it the, towards the pocket. This is sort of 50-50, so I'm just gonna place them like that so the smooth sides face towards the blade. It just depends on the design of each knife. If there's a pocket in the blade, but not, a, not any sort of pocket on the um, liner or the titanium, then I'll put it inside of the blade. So the pocketed side that holds all the grease is sort of away from debris. Now a good thing that is cool is very much like the Yojimbo and the PM Pair 3 and a lot of those, has these concave screws that auto align, just keeping tolerances better than just putting the screw in. Gotta make sure I'm safe with these so these don't get stripped. Yeah, cool. And I'm just gonna hand tighten them because that's what it seems like it was from the factory. It wasn't like cranked down by a wrench or anything, it was so simple to get 
this out, so I'm just gonna give it a good old ugga dugga call it a day. Cool, okay, so now here's the part I was talking about. Essentially, while doing this, you have to take the pivot, push it in the blade, move the blade around. So you can see it's not just, hmm, okay. So it's not the worst thing in the world. It's not as bad as like a bug out one if you're doing that the first times, but it, it just is something that, I don't know. I can understand maybe you're going for aesthetics where you like the way it looks clean with this D-shaped pivot. Yeah, but that is how that works. So, got a little Loctite, put it on there. All right, I'm back, sorry. We're filming this in my house where the Loctite for some reason is on top of the toilet. Don't ask me why, I have no reason or no explanation other than probably a baby. Got a hold of the bottle and wanted to hide it, so, because it's not really safe for a baby to be playing with unless it just sort of gets set aside and forgotten about. There we go. Nice little dollop of daisy. And so it's not that bad, but it, it is, it's just, I don't know. I don't think it has to be that hard, and it is. I'd also like to see that he treated his knife just because, like, it's interesting that like the blade has the coloration that it does. Get off Loctite, don't want you under my car to... Okay, so... I'm gonna simply tighten these now. Just a little love, nothing crazy. Wow, that's nice, almost dead on. That is pretty good action. I could imagine with some wearing in of the components and some lubricant that it could be borderline drop volley, drop shut. Hmm. Is it drop shut or drop fall? I think it's drop shut, I wanna say, but on all. Come on, bearings, do your thing. One thing I do like about bearings is it is the easiest, in my opinion, to get no blade play and the best action. I know that's kind of the point, but with washers, it's kind of like, especially like, it seems like with bench maids, it is like really like, you have to get it bang on or there is no forgiveness. That is really nice. Okay, so here we are. So, final thoughts on my first impressions review. So, this knife is pretty simple, and this is sort of what I was thinking when I got the blade. I'm like, what am I going to say? What's going to sound cool? Yada, yada, yada. This knife is simple. It's not reinventing the wheel. Goodness gracious, look at me. Sorry, this isn't even in frame. So this knife is rather simple. It's not reinventing the wheel. It's another liner uh, lock flipper, right? Or, yeah, liner lock, not frame lock. Liner lock flipper. So it's not reinventing any wheels, but it's kind of refreshing to see that somebody's not necessarily trying to do that. It's just a well-made knife for the most part. Um, and it's a good working tool. You know, one of the reasons I like a light knife like the Para 3 even though it has the compression lock 
and that is sort of like an innovation of Spyderco. Um, or your Axis Lock, which is now your uh, sorry bug out, which is now more um, available since the patents ended up expiring. It's a situation with both of these life knives that they're not necessarily doing anything that is so you know groundbreaking. You know, I like that it has sort of nested liners, and I like the way that you know it's very good tolerances, right? And the way that it it's just it's a good working tool but it's also kind of nice to look at you don't have to really worry about this getting damaged it's just a tool through and through but the ergos are great there's different ways to hold it you have a lot of flexibility with the knife overall i mean the fit and finish of this is really nice again there is the problem with not everything necessarily aligning perfectly but it gives it sort of a charm for some people some people that might really take them off you have to kind of notice that this knife is made by hand and also what's interesting is ever so slightly i thought this was the case when i was feeling the way this falls on my hand this is not flat this is actually ever so slightly rounded and that's why it feels so dang good in the hand. Let me close this. Yeah. Wow. So that is just ever so slightly rounded. And the edges are concaved where it's swollen in the middle and come to the side, uh, you know, off to the side. And what it gives you is this sort of great slab-sided look that I do like. Sort of like this, right? But it's just ever so slightly rounded. Very similar. So this is just doing a lot of things right. There are some things that I don't like. Again, I wish there was some sort of pin system that would shove into the back, the um, into the good lord backspacer that would make it impossible. Though I also wish that somehow you didn't have to do that weird sort of pressure sandwich alignment game to get everything right with the knife itself. Um, also, it seems like geez, just noticed that the uh, blade center is way off now. So that's a thing I'll have to address. But uh, yeah, it's a pretty good knife overall. I do believe that, you know, since this is sort of small batch, I think the maker is going ahead and learning knife by knife with uh, how to make these type of knives and how to get everything looking right. Overall, I'm pretty impressed. I end up going ahead and posting a full review, letting you know my full thoughts of the knife once I get some use under my belt. But uh, yeah, I hope everybody enjoyed. Hope you have a great rest of your night. If you like this video, um, even though I kind of struggled through some of the disassembly bits and learning about the knife, if you did like it, please go ahead and give a like, thumbs up. I'd love to comment below asking any questions about the knife itself. Uh, of course, if you did like, I would also appreciate it if you subscribe as I'm trying to aggressively grow the channel. And there's I really appreciate you taking time out of your day to watch this as there is so many other great channels out there that you could be watching instead. Of course, I hope everybody has an amazing rest of your night like I've repeated a hundred times. And um, take care. Have a great weekend. Peace.